This is a kite I made with three separate panels for the sail. I made a center strip of one material and then I used the same material on each side for the remaining part of the sail. And I glued the parts together so it formed one piece. And then I cut the kite out of that three panel, one piece sail. And this is what I have. Now, my thinking was that I would use a material in the center that was more flexible and a material for the outer part of the sail that was stiffer just to find out what would happen. Well, I like the way this kite flies, but I want to expand that idea. So I'm going to try another thing. And before I get into that, let me just show you what I did here on the nose of this kite. This is a piece of, oh, it's about six or seven mil thick drafting mylar that I put double-sided tape on and bonded it to the leading edge nose area on both sides to stiffen it. And then I put a small piece this way diagonally to add more stiffness to the nose area of the kite. And I'm not sure yet whether that's a plus or a minus, <laughs> but I'll just, since it's on this kite, I thought I'd just show it to you. So what I do, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, use a piece of white Orcon, which is extremely flexible, very lightweight. I'm going to use it in the center of the sail, and then I'm going to use the same material, this, it's called cellophane, and it's about one mil thick, maybe 1.2 mil thick polyfilm that's relatively stiff when you compare it to the flexibility of Orcon or some other uh, materials. <clears throat> so I first cut a strip of Orcon. This one is uh, about two and a half inches wide, I think is where they got it. And I'm going to bond on each side of this strip a piece of this red polyfilm or uh, cellophane is what it's actually, what its brand name is, I think. I bought it, I bought this material here at uh, papermarked.com. So what I did is I cut two pieces of this red material and I overlapped them on top of my uh, piece of cutting mat. And I'm simply going to cut both of them at once in order to know that both are, are going to be matched when I actually bond them to the Orcon. So I'm just going to use a razor blade uh, to cut it. And I don't know if you can actually see this or not, or whether you care. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just going to use a razor blade to cut it along my straight edge. And I'm just cutting it in order to make sure that it's pretty straight and that both sides of the film are equal. Now, once that's done, oh, I've got a little bit more to do here. I think I'll just cut this with a scissor. This is the tail end, but it won't matter. So now I take away the excess here, this strip that I cut away. And now what I'm going to do is take my cutting mat out. <clears throat> And 
and I'm going to spray my glass work surface with water. Well, I have the three pieces wetted down on my glass, and I have them lined up the way that I want them to be when they're finished. So what I'm now going to do is bond them together. Uh, the bonding can be with double-sided tape, which is the easiest, I think, but I have not had a great deal of success with the tape holding uh, the bond as strongly as contact cement does. So as even though contact cement is messier to deal with, <laughs> especially for me, since I'm kind of sloppy anyway, but uh, I'm going to use contact cement. Now I have a little bottle of it here. It's a weld, weld wood. It's uh, thinned. I thin my weld with glue. So it's probably 15% toluene, tol 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 which is one of the chemicals in, in one of the solvents in the uh, glue itself. And that's why I use toluene for the thinner of the glue. So it's at least consistent with what the glue is made of. And then I'm going to use a small brush and brush it on to the onto the surfaces that I want to be bonded. Now with contact cement, it's best if you apply the cement to the two surfaces that are going to be bonded and then allow those surfaces to dry before you bond them together. So that isn't always practical for me. I'm just a little too impatient sometimes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel away one side of this film and I'm going to put a ruler on it to make sure that it stays where it's supposed to for now. And then I'm going to paint contact cement onto the Orcon. And then while it's still wet, I am going to fold this film back over and bond it to the Orcon. Now, one of the things that I like to do is use wax paper. Wax paper is a great tool when you're gluing something to help prevent the glued area from bonding too quickly. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. So this might take a little bit of time here because I'm pretty slow. Now it's also possible that this glue is going to get on the glass and we'll want to bond the materials of the sail to the glass. And that does happen when you do it this way. And uh, what I do in that case <clears throat> is uh, not worry too much about it really, because the glass is wet and so the water really does a good job of minimizing the bonding capability of the, of the glue. 
So, and then I'll just very carefully put this back where it was onto the Oricon, smooth it out while the glue is wet. Now, this isn't the strongest way to use contact cement, but I have found it to work pretty darn well. I never had a seam like this come apart. I have had seams like this come apart when I use tape. But tape, if you use it properly and have tape that bonds well, is an easier material to use. And uh, many, many kite makers prefer it because it's so easy and it's not as messy. <laughs> this is quite messy by comparison. Now the seam, I want to be about a quarter of an inch wide. It doesn't have to be that wide, I don't think, because the bonding strength of the glue is pretty good. It probably doesn't require that, but I have always felt that a little more is going to do a better job. <laughs> And when you make a kite, you, you know, sometimes the kites take a little longer to make, like doing this kind of stuff. And you don't want it to come apart on you in the middle of a, a 15 mile an hour wind or something. So I'm going to do the same on the other side now. And bring the film back over and carefully lay it on here. Now, in using wax paper, I would put wax paper over this, the whole thing, if I wanted to, and then align the two pieces and then pull the wax paper out after they're aligned. But because the glass is wet and uh, the films have been aligned on the glass already. I'm simply doing it this way, which is probably as good. I don't know, we'll find out, I guess. Anyway, I, I press down on the glue, it's still wet, and it takes a while for it to dry when it's bonded this way. But when I finish, I'll take my kite template <clears throat> and cut it out like so, where the spine will be along the center of the Orcon strip. Well, I wetted my glass surface again and spread out the three-piece sail. Laid my, well then I put my nose leading edge reinforcement on and this is just a piece of mylar with uh, double-sided tape. I didn't put it all the way to the spine. You can see the spine line right here. I wanted this to be flexible enough to allow the nose, the nose area of the kite to form a little bit of a V uh, when the wind hit it. I don't know if that's a smart idea or a dumb idea but it's one that I've been exploring. And so far, 
I like the results. So on this kite, I'm going to continue with that idea. And uh, I just put my template on it. And I used a hot cutter and cut around the film. So now I have a completed three-piece sail that has the uh, reinforcing for the nose. Now all I need to do is put on my spine, the bow, complete the kite.